Hi guys, it's Lindsay. Welcome back to The Wandering Reader. Today I'm going to be doing my May book haul. It was my birthday in May, so I spent a little bit of birthday money buying some books, which is always good. And then I picked up a few more during the month, uh, sort of new releases and things like that. So let's jump into what I got this month. So the first set of books that I've got to show you are ones that I picked up with uh, birthday money. So I bought six ones that I sort of had on my wish list for a while. Um, and it's just a bit of a joy to just go on there and pick out some books that you've been kind of wanting forever. So it was really nice to do that. So I picked up firstly a copy of Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda by Becky Albertalli. This is a well-loved book um, in the YA sort of genre. Uh, she recently bought her, her second one, which I think is called something like Unrequited Love. Can't quite remember the title of that. Um, but this one follows a 16 year old boy called Simon who has been conversing with a boy called Blue over email and um, both boys go to the same high school but they don't know who each other is in real life. Um, Simon is uh, gay but he hasn't told anybody he's gay and the only person he knows is Blue. Um, and it's just about sort of at the beginning of the book somebody finds out that he's emailing Blue and it's just about how it all kind of unfolds. This was, I've read this already and I thought it was absolutely fantastic. I talk about it a bit more in my wrap up but definitely a YA book that I would recommend. Um, yeah it was fabulous. The second book that I picked up was The Glorious Heresies by Lisa McKerney. This won the Bailey's Women's Prize for Fiction last year um, and so I was interested in reading it for that reason. Um, I believe this has got something to do with gangs. I'll read you the pack. We all do stupid things when we're kids. Ryan Cusack's grown up faster than most. Being the oldest of six with a dead mum and an alcoholic dad will do that for you. And nobody says Ryan's stupid, not even he's behind his back. It's the people around him who are the problem. The gangland boss using his dad as a cleaner. The neighbour who says that she's trying to help but maybe wants to meet more than that. The prostitute searching for the man she never knew she'd miss until he disappeared without trace one night. The only one on Ryan's side is his girlfriend, Kareen. If he blows that, he's all alone. But the truth is, you don't know your own strength until you need it. It actually says on the back as well that it was the winner of the Desmond Elliott Prize for debut fiction. So, um, yeah, I heard quite a, a few good things about this um, on BookTube last year when people were reviewing it for the Bailey's Prize, so I'm excited to read that one. Next up is a book that my husband and I were talking about recently. We were talking about a list that his school were putting together for um, students, you know, 50 books you should read before you leave high school. And um, I mentioned this one to him um, and it reminded me just how much I loved it and how I, I didn't have a copy of it anymore, so I bought myself co another copy. And that is Noughts and Crosses by Mallory. Blackman. This uh, takes the um, history of white and black people and flips it on his head and it's sort of a Romeo and Juliet uh, retelling. This is the first book I think in a trilogy but I never read the other two books um, so I'm really interested in rereading this and then getting around to reading the other two and also I really want my husband to pick it up as well. So um, yeah I, I think I read this about 10 years ago now and um, I remember being in in secondary school, so maybe it was longer than that, but uh, yeah, it was longer than that. But um, yeah, I really enjoyed it at the time, so I'm looking forward to rereading that one. But next up, I have a book by Renee Audier called The Wrath and the Dawn. I read Flame in the Mist this month, um, and I did a review of that, which I'll link down below. Um, but I really enjoyed Renee Audier's um, writing, and um, this is the first book that she wrote, and it's the first book in the duology. Um, and um, I believe it's like a, a Thousand and One Nights retelling. Um, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, so this is about um, somebody in the... If I just read you the back it'd probably be easier. Every dawn brings horror to a different family in a land ruled by a killer. Khalid, the 18 year old Khalif of Khorasan, takes a new bride each night only to have her executed at sunrise. So it is a terrible surprise when 16 year old Shahzad volunteers to marry Khalid. But she does so with a clever plan to stay alive and exact revenge on the Caliph for the murder of her best friend and countless other girls. Shazi's wit and will get her through to the dawn that no others have seen, but with a catch, she may be falling in love with the murderer. 
Shazzy discovered that the villainous boy king is not all that he seems and neither are the deaths of so many girls. It's up to her to uncover the reason for the murders and to break the cycle once and for all. Yeah, so like I said, I really liked Flame in the Mist and I was a big fan of her writing so I wanted to try something else by her so I picked up um, this one. And then I was on Twitter um, a couple of weeks ago and Victoria Swab uh, tweeted that she was going to be in London um, over the summer and she's doing a few different signings, one at Forbidden Planet, I think one at a YA con event um, at the beginning of August I think. Um, and it really kind of piqued my interest. I've never read anything by her before, but I thought, you know, people on, she's much beloved on, on Bookchieve, especially for um, people who read lots of YA. So I thought I would give her a go. Um, I picked up a couple of her adult books. I believe she writes um, as Victoria Swab when she's writing YA, but V Schwab when she's writing adult fantasy. So firstly, I picked up a copy of Vicious by her. And this sounded a little bit sort of, Frankenstein-esque which I was quite intrigued by. Um, it says on the back, Victor and Eli started out as college roommates, brilliant arrogant lonely boys who recognise the same ambition in each other. A shared interest in adrenaline, near-death experiences and seemingly supernatural events reveals an intriguing possibility. That under the right conditions someone could develop extraordinary abilities. But when their thesis moves from the academic to the experimental things go horribly wrong. Ten years later, Victor breaks out of prison, determined to catch up with, um, to his old friend, now foe, aided by a young girl with a stunning ability. Meanwhile, Eli is on a mission to eradicate every other super-powered person that he can find, aside from his psychic and in enigmatic woman with an unbreakable will. Armed with terrible power on both sides, driven by the memory of betrayal and loss, the arch nemeses have set a course for revenge, but who will be left alive at the end. Yeah, so that kind of experimental sort of thing reminded me of Frankenstein and the sort of consequences of science and things like that. So um, this sounds like it's going to be quite good. And then the other book that I picked up by her, again under her V.E. Swab uh, name, is A Darker Shade of Magic. Um, this is the first book in a trilogy and I believe it follows a main character who lives in a particular London and there are four different kinds of London. So it says on the back, Kel is one of the last travellers. Magicians with a rare ability to travel between parallel universes connected by one magical city. There's Grey London, without magic and ruled by the mad King George III. Red London, where magic is revered and where Kel was raised alongside the heir to the Empire. White London, where people fight to control the remaining magic and magic fights back. And once there was Black London. So I believe Kel can kind of, you, sh you shouldn't be able to travel between the different Londons, but I believe the main character can. The third book in this trilogy just came out, um, so people have been talking about this quite a lot, so I thought I would give that one a go. And then the other set of books that I picked up are just ones that I've sort of pre-ordered or picked up because they've been newly released, or just ones that have piqued my interest when I've been sort of browsing um, in bookshops and things like that. The first one I did pre-order and it came on the 2nd of May and that is A Court of Wings and Ruin by Sarah J Maas. This is the third book in the Court of Films and Roses trilogy. Um, I read the second one a couple of months ago and really enjoyed getting back into the world again so um, I was excited for this. My husband has read this already and while he enjoyed it he said he didn't really like the ending that much um, which is a bit disappointing um, and I've heard mixed things um, since that sort of from people talking about it on booktube um so yeah a little bit scared to pick this one up but and it's a chunk i think it's probably the longest one in the trilogy so far it's about 700 yeah just short of 700 pages so i don't know when i'll get around to reading that one um yeah but i've got that one then inspired by reagan at pre's project i picked up a copy of the demon king by cinder williams chimer um reagan loves cinder williams chimer she's a big fantasy reader and cinder williams chimer is a i think sort of like a ya slash adult fantasy writer um so this is part of the seven realm series book one um and it's been blurred by Robin Hobb and my husband is such a fan of Robin Hobb. So she's got a few series out but this was one that, um, so one of the, the beginning of one of her series so I just thought I'd give that one a go. Again my husband's read it and he said it was very very good so I'm looking forward to picking that up. I, I do like reading fantasy so um, 
I'm looking forward to getting into more of that this summer. Then I picked up a copy of Into the Water by Paula Hawkins. This came out again at the beginning of May. Um, I read The Girl on the Train last year and absolutely loved it. I thought it was a brilliant thriller. I have heard that this is very, very different from her um, debut novel. Um, so yeah, looking forward to, to kind of diving into this. Uh, I'm, it says on the back, Nell Abbott is dead, she said. They found her in the water. She jumped. So yeah, I mean, there were copies of this everywhere. And surprisingly, they had audio books of this in Sainsbury's, which you almost never see sort of supermarkets selling audio books. So there's a lot of hype around this at the moment. It's not particularly long. I think it's gonna be a summer read for me, just maybe just over 300, 350 pages. I think that would be a definite good summer read for me. Um, and I'm looking forward to seeing what she comes out with next. Then I picked up a copy of uh, The Girls by Emma Klein. I do have a um, ebook copy of this, um, or an e-copy of this on my Kindle, um, but I saw this for cheap in my local supermarket, so I decided to get it in physical copy. Um, I have heard some really good things about it so um, I'm sure I will enjoy it. This is about 1960s America and it's about a cult and um, some sort of girls that are involved in this cult. So at the back it says Evie Boyd is 14 and desperate to be noticed. It's the summer of 1969 and restless empty days stretch ahead of her until she sees them, the girls, hair long and uncombed, jewellery catching the sun. And at their centre, Suzanne, black-haired and beautiful. If not for Suzanne, she might not have gone. But intoxicated by her and the life she promises, Evie follows the girls back to the decaying ranch where they live. Was there a warning? A sign of what was coming? Or did Evie know already that there was no way back? So, yeah, it's intrigued me ever since I picked up a copy of it on my um, Kindle. So um, I'm looking forward to picking that up probably this summer. And then lastly, they have like this budget section in my supermarket where they have like kind of um, cheap books. And I spotted a copy of this. It's called Beatrix and Benedict uh, by Matt Marina Fiorato. Uh, beautiful cover. Um, it says, we know how it ended, but how did it begin? So this is a retelling of Much Ado About Nothing by William Shakespeare. Um, and I've taught that play a couple of times now and I really quite like it. This is apparently about um, Beatrice and Benedict's story. So their relation, how the relationship started off, what happened before he went to war, and then kind of what happened afterwards. Um, so it says in the back, hidden in the language of Shakespeare's best love comedy, Much Ado About Nothing, are several clues to an intriguing tale. It seems that the witty lovers, Beatrice and Benedict, had a previous love affair which ended bitterly. But how did they meet? Why did they part? And what, after oceans apart and divided by war and slander, brought them together again? In a journey that takes us from the courts of sunlit Sicily to the crippled Armada fleet, and from a cruel curse uttered at the stake to the glorious Renaissance cities of the north, Marina Fiorato tells a story of intrigue, treachery and betrayal that will shed a new light on Shakespeare's most appealing lovers. So the scene where they insult each other at the beginning of the play is probably one of my most favourite Shakespeare scenes. Um, so um, yeah, I'm really interested in, in reading this story and sort of finding out a bit more about their relationship and seeing how uh, Marina Fiorato has kind of taken their relationship um, and done different things with it. So there's that one. There you go guys, they were all the books that I picked up in May. I'd be really interested to have a chat with you in the comments. Have you read any of these? Which one do you think I should pick up first? Thanks very much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.